Hi, good afternoon everyone, and thank you for joining us for our webinar today, The Creative Possibilities of Magic Q, GDTF, and MVR. My name is Claire Manley, and I'm the Marketing Specialist for GDTF and MVR. And before we get started today, I just have a couple quick housekeeping items to go through. So first, this webinar is being recorded, and you'll find the on-demand version on the GDTF YouTube page along with all other past manufacturer webinars, some additional training content, and additional videos. And lastly, if you have questions at any time throughout the presentation, please feel free to write them in the questions box, which is located in your control panel, and we'll save some time at the end to get through all the questions. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest presenter for today, James Harrison. Hi, my name's James, Support and Product Manager here at CAMSYS, and in this webinar we're going to be looking at how you can integrate both GDTF and MVR with MagicQ and other control systems as well. So first off we're going to start looking at MVR, or My Virtual Rig if you've not heard of it before, and how you can use that to transfer data between CAD visualizers and of course then into consoles. Now MVR files worth mentioning do contain GDTF files for their fixtures, uh, so we're going to start off by looking uh, in a Vectorworks file that we created. Best way to see it and learn how it works is to practically do it. So here you can see in Vectorworks uh, I've got a show file and you can see I've just already selected one of the spots here so it's a Maverick spot. You can see it's addressed and it's got its mode set and I'm going to go through and just show you some of the other fixtures. So I've got a generic fixture uh, up in the, the truss at the top here uh, which if I go into this generic fixture you can see it's set as an ETC uh, source 4 PAR fixture. Um, now worth mentioning at this point, uh, our uh, MVR files contain not just the fixture data, but scene objects, trusses, etc. as well. Uh, as I'm going through and just looking at some of the other fixtures in the rig, uh, you can see here I've set the fixture type. If you don't have a fixture type, you can set the GDTF file directly. We'll get into GDF, GDTF uh, in a moment. But now we've got a Vectorworks file, let's export it. So let's go to File up the top here, and let's go down to Export, and we're going to go down to Export MVR. And now, worth mentioning at the moment, MagicQ currently only supports uh, export, or sorry, import of MVR files for the lighting fixtures. We don't uh, support import for objects, so things like trusses right now. So we're just going to select the lighting devices. In future, we will be supporting uh, taking objects like trusses as well. So we've selected those. Uh, we now need to choose where to save it. I'm going to drop it in my MagicQ show folder. Put it anywhere you like, uh, but if you're going to take the MagicQ on a same PC, worth putting it in your MagicQ show folder. I'm going to hit save and OK, and it's now going to export that MVR file out of Vectorworks uh, as a now an MVR file that can be read uh, by anything that is supporting MVR files. So that's now saved off. Uh, now, of course, an MVR file, yes, I can load it to MagicQ, but the idea being that once you've made that MVR file, you can share it with any other consoles uh, that are supporting MVR. So you might have seen previous webinars, uh, MA have shown how you can take an MVR file and load it in there. So the idea being, uh, you've got maybe a festival stage, an MVR file, that's shared between anyone who's coming through, and they can use it and load it onto their consoles. So let's look at the process then of taking it into MagicQ. When I save that MVR file, I put that into my show folder in MagicQ. I'm going to start by creating a new show, so I'm going to go to Setup, New Show, and Yes. And then I'm going to select Normal Live Programming Mode. Again, if you're a Magic user, select the programming mode you like, or custom and load your own settings. You can now see in my Visualizer and in my Patch Window, it's a completely empty show. No fixtures, no programming, nothing in there at all. I'm going to go to Setup, File Manager, and hopefully I should find, if I sort by a date here, I should find my MVR file. There you go, Show their Demo Show. Uh, .mvr file. I can load the MVR file like I would a show file in Magic Cube by just select, simply clicking on it. You can see at the moment now Magic Cube at the bottom is now patching uh, the MVR files. It takes a moment. Uh, it's, you're showing this pop-up at the moment because we're not taking the models in. So if I just hit clear there and I expand my visualizer, you can see it's now brought in all of the fixtures from the MVR file. Now you remember back in uh, Vectorworks, I selected just the lighting fixtures only, so I didn't bring the trusses in. As I say, we are working to support the trusses, pipes, etc., other objects uh, via MVR into MagicQ in the future, uh, but it is a future thing we're supporting. The important thing is we've got the fixture data and all of their positions now into MagicQ. So you can see them clearly in our viz here. If I minimize that back 
down, open up my patch window and go to view heads, you'll see, there we go, there's our fixtures all there. Uh, now, we'll get onto GDTF in a moment, uh, but if you look uh, just at one of the fixtures there, it says G-DMX mode. Now, uh, if you're looking at Magic Queue and you see any of your fixtures in your patch list that say uh, G-DMX mode, so if I go for another one here, what that means is it's actually taking a GDTF file. G, GDTF, very obvious, hopefully. Uh, so it's using the GDTF file rather than a file from the MagicQ fixture library. So it's taken that directly out of the MVR file and patched it. It's got all the addresses that we'd set uh, in Vectorworks and used those here in our MagicQ file. So it's, it's patched my show file up the fixtures. It's arranged my visualizers. And I'm now pretty much ready to get cracking with programming. Uh, now, I'm not going to go too much into the programming side. That's completely separate. If you are interested in learning how to use MagicQ, we've got other training courses available to, to show you how to do that. We're focused on MVR and GDTF in this session uh, but big advantage of using an MVR file is hopefully it's accurate to your rig so there's tricks in magic queue where you can go to things like your plot window in magic queue and you can very quickly go and select things like you know all of your spot fixtures and MVR contains all of the data of where those fixtures are in the rig my virtual rig uh, and we can do things like you know focus on target in magic queue and we can quickly because we know the fixture positions position our fixtures by dragging around and do smart things like having focused lines because again because we know where the fixtures are and spread our fixtures you know across the front of the stage of course you can use things like odds evens etc to get nice symmetric uh, looks uh, across there uh, again more magic key programming uh, in some of our other training not in this session uh, so we support MVR import uh, so let's say you've been given an MVR file um, by whoever's coming in but you use a different visualizer so I also have capture on my machine here and I've just got a blank capture file here. I've started a new show as you can see there's absolutely nothing in this capture file. Well I can take that MVR file that I exported from Vectorworks and I can chuck that in capture. Why am I showing you this? Because I want to take the MVR file again from capture and put it into MagicQ to show you we're, we're supporting other systems as well. So uh, let's go file here. Let's go uh, import model. And I've already put myself in my documents MagicQ show folder. And you can see there is my MVR file that came out of Vectorworks. I'm going to open that file. And uh, capture a little bit different to how we do an import. Uh, at this point, ask us to match up the fixtures. And you can see it's matched up everything apart from uh, my Source 4 fixtures. So I go to Identify here. And I can just choose uh, any fixture I like from a library. So I'm just going to go and just grab... Whoop, anything I like from here I know it's not going to be the same thing let's just call it a snow machine I know it's generics but whatever uh, we're going to hit continue and then there is our MVR file what how capture works is you click and drag and select and then you use the button here to drag it down into your rig uh, or you can capture here uh, place the file and then if I close the import window there I now have a capture file which contains all of those fixtures and the positions etc which came out uh, of my Vectorworks file. Now you'll notice because I just dumped it in the middle of the room uh, my zero point is going to be a little bit off here uh, but to show the process then uh, we'll go file uh, this time export model uh, and we're in the MagicQ show folder already I don't want a DWD I want it as an MVR file and I'm going to call that my capture MVR so good use case uh, festival uh, or whatever touring show you've You've given the MVR file that you created in one package to someone else. They use another visualizer. They add their floor package or their amendments or whatever to it. They export the MVR. Guess what? You can take that MVR file, put it in Magic Q and use it as well. Now, you could get clever and do things like imports and import an MVR to add the extra floor package. Uh, just for simplicity now, I'm going to start a new show off again. I'm going to go to File Manager, Sort by Date. There's my Capture MVR here. Click on it. It's going to start patching it there. And it's going to tell me uh, it's finished patching. Again, don't worry about the error. It's because we're not taking all the model data. If I expand my visualizer up, you can see uh, there's the fixtures. You'll notice some of them are sort of through, through the floor. That was because of the way I placed them when I put them in capture. Uh, very quickly, we can uh, set that correct in Magic Q. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my group window, and I'm just going to select all the fixtures. Now, remember when I did my import, to capture I set the generics as snow machines so uh, yeah uh, run with me for this 
Uh, of course, then I can then use my XY positioning. So I can go Y positioning and bring up those fixtures uh, off the middle of the floor. So they actually sit through. There you go. You can see the fixtures have come in uh, from Capture, MVR file, into Magic Viz, into Magic Q. They're all patched up uh, and ready to go. Now, because I use snow machines in Capture and not dimmers, uh, it's come in as a different fixture to what I'd expect. Now, of course, it's a lighting console then. You can morph the fixtures. So you can literally, if I bring the viz back down in Magic Q, uh, because we know the position already, you could go choose head, choose the correct fixture, select and morph, morph into it. The fixtures stay in the same place. You're just, our morphing is our fixture exchanging, exchanging for the fixture it should be. Um, so it doesn't actually matter if it comes in, you know, an MVR file all as dimmers for us as Magic Q. Uh, we could morph it to the correct thing. Now, obviously, best practice, it should come in as the correct fixture because you're getting the nice GTTF file, which is hopefully correct with all of the right data, control, etc. coming in as well. So that's the MVR part and how you can get that in and start using that uh, with Magic Q. Let's look at the second part, which is GDTF. So at this point, I'm going to go over to the GDTF Share website. Uh, GDTF Share, general device type format, if you've not heard of it before. Hopefully you have because you've joined this webinar. Uh, in the GDTF share, uh, anyone can create an account, log in there, and you can access everything in the GDTF library. The great thing about GDTF files is, uh, particularly manufacturer-made ones, well, they've made it, and they've put everything about that fixture in that file. They've put not just, it's not just a DMX profile. It's got physical data. It's got geometry. It's got macro data. It's got color data. Everything we could hopefully possibly want to control that fixture is in that file. And a lot of them are there by the manufacturer. So hopefully it's accurate data there. Most important thing. And uh, particularly for us as a controller, we know that for you as operators, uh, the hardest thing is getting bad fixture data or a bad personality file. You know, nothing worse than pre-programming a show, getting to the venue, it doesn't quite work. Or even those, you know, you, you, you haven't got time for pre-programming. You get to site and a fixture doesn't quite work properly. Well, hopefully with a GDTF file, it's manufacturer made in, in a lot of cases. It's good data, hopefully, and, and helps your workflow uh, with your programming. So uh, talking about manufacturer data, if you go into the share here, I can change my upload and filter by everything, which is the default, or I can go by manufacturers only. So I can see data which has come uh, from registered manufacturers. So uh, we're part of the Chauvet group of companies. So let's go to Chauvet Professional and fly the flag there. And you can see here, there's some uh, fixtures here, GDTF files, um, but uh, show the professional have uploaded to the share here so we've got uh, a number of different uh, their fixtures so let's go for the force one spot fixture here and if we go into it what does the gdtf file have well it shows us all the different modes of that fixtures all of its channels all the basic stuff there um, at the top here we can see tags to say uh, does it contain um, uh, viz data has been tested etc the data was added to the library its version and a rating. You know, we can go and rate that file and say, yeah, it's fantastic. It works very well and give it reason why. I've rated it here because I've tested it. I imported it before uh, doing this webinar. Most importantly, how do I use that file then in uh, another world? So like taking it onto a lighting console. So uh, if I go and download that file, you can see there you go, it's downloaded. Now I cheated earlier as I've already copied that file and put it into my Magic U folder. And that's the easy bit. I literally went to my downloads folder, copied it into my MagicQ uh, show directory. Uh, and then here's one I did earlier. Then if I go back to MagicQ, uh, and let's do a bit of morphing of this show. So uh, this show that I bought in from Capture with some different fixture modes. Um, if I go into my patch window, oh sorry, if I go to my setup window, I go to file manager, uh, and I've put my GDTF files into a folder called GDTF 2022 here. And inside here, I should be able to find uh, my fixture that I exported, so the Force One spot. And you literally just click on it. It's a bit like if you're just loading a show or anything else. Uh, click on the GDTF file. The GDTF file contains all of the modes of that fixture. So I'm going to pick here 32 channel mode. And it's loaded in that GDTF file. Now you can see here it's given me some warnings. Uh, you can open the log file and see what the warnings are. Typically, that'd be things that maybe. Magic U doesn't support from that file, so some of them may be geometry uh, data in a GDTF file. We don't kind of support all of that uh, for our viz 
uh, our magic viz is a basic visualizer it doesn't replace things like capture WYSIWYG etc uh, so you might see that pop up you can open the log and see it but uh, you can see at the top of my uh, magic key window uh, it's now open that GDTF file I can hit edit head I can go view channels and I can see it's put all of the channel data in uh, what magic key will do is, is it will take things like the default values so again the GDTF file has defaults and things like pan tilt so when you locate you get them at 50 50 it will bring all those in it sets them to the right attributes um, we add palettes to the fixture so uh, for showy fixtures we have a whole load of different theater palettes that we add uh, because we know it's a showy fixture we do that in the background um, it's got all the ranges so things like uh, all the colors on the color wheel the shutter ranges gobos all that good stuff that's all in the gdtf file that all comes in uh, to our file here uh, any head macros so things like being able to lamp on off if it's you know if it's an old uh discharge style fixture you can see all those in here or even things like you know your yeah, macros for anything blackouts pan tilt speed all that good stuff uh, so we can see our gdtf file has come in as a head file of magic queue and we can get on and we can use that so uh, let's come out of our head editor let's close that and let's start morphing some of our fixtures around so that was a spot fixture uh, these fixtures along here are spots uh, in our show file so uh, let's try and identify them uh, so if I head test on here and scroll up and down there you can see those ones there should be our spots so I'm gonna head test off click and drag down and then I'm gonna morph them into our GDTF file that we already imported of the Chauve Maverick Force One spot and hit yes. The first thing you'll see is, is unpatch those fixtures. The reason it's unpatched those fixtures is because the original spots uh, had a different channel count to the Force One spots that I've now selected. So, e.g., you know, my original spots might have been 25 channels. Uh, these ones, as you can see, are 32. It didn't fit in that range, so it unpatched them. Uh, I can just very quickly then go and repatch them somewhere I know there's space. So, let's go Universe 15, starting channel one. I've repatched those fixtures now into Magic Q. So in theory, then, if I go to my group window, select them and locate, I've got my spots come into my show, as I'd expect, in the right place, in the right position, and I can then crack on with my programming using GDTF. So that's how you can take GDTF and MVR and use them with Magic Q. So we can take our MVR file to contain all of the objects, fixtures, etc., bring them into Magic Q, we can use GDTF if anything changes. We can, you know, more fixtures as you've seen there uh, using good data that's come from the manufacturers, which is hopefully all accurate and tested. So we've now got time to take some questions. So happy to take questions now if you do have them. I think you type them in the chat. Uh, happy to show people uh, further demos of taking MVR or how you can use things like the position data you've got in, etc. into Magic Q. Uh, thank you for watching this webinar and hopefully we'll take a few questions now.